Good morning. I'm Al Myers, the pastor emeritus here at Conyers Presbyterian Church, and I should like to speak to you about stewardship and particularly about tithing. Let me tell you a story. This is a story that comes from, from many cultures, but I'd like to choose the culture of the medieval times. It's the story of a king who took as one of his projects of touring around his, uh, his kingdom to visit people and see how they were doing. He kept noticing this one farmer who had a very meager amount of land and how he struggled to, to make a living. So he decided one day that he would give additional acres adjoining this, uh, this, this farmer's property so that he might have more property to farm and thereby make a better living. The farmer was grateful to him for this. The farmer began clearing the land and in the process of clearing it, he hit something hard in the soil, clunk. And so he dug it up to see what it was, dirty object, couldn't really tell what it was till he got it home and washed it off and discovered that it was a gold pestle, a part of the pestle and mortar set. And so he was just thrilled that he had, uh, you know, that he had found this treasure. And so he talked to his wife about it and said, I'm going to give this to the king and grateful appreciation for his giving me these, these other acres so that we might make a farm. And she said, oh, no, don't, don't do that. Because he will immediately say, okay, here's the pestle. Where is the mortar? And he will accuse you then of holding out on him. And he said, no, no, he won't do that. He, he, he's, a, he's a benevolent man. So he went to the castle, presented the mortar to the, to the king, and uh, the king looked it over and was just thrilled to receive it. And then he said, where's the pestle? Where's the mortar and the pestle? And he said, are you still holding that out on? And he said, oh no, this is all that I dug up and found. The king didn't believe him, so he threw him in prison, just like the wife had said. And the poor man was so distraught in prison that he just kept hopping around on one foot in his prison say, cell saying, I should have listened to my wife. I should have listened to my wife. And the king's guards went and told him what he was saying. He said, what in the world does he mean? He says, well, I, I don't know. That's all he's said the whole time that he's there. So the king had him brought to his, to his uh, chamber and said, why are you saying I should have listened to my wife? So he told him the story about his wife said, don't take this to the king, said she's a very wise woman. Well, the king immediately wanted to meet her because she wanted a wise advisor. And so uh, he had her brought to his, uh, to his palace. And uh, the, with, the, with the two uh, farming couple there, they, uh, they, he interviewed them and discovered the wisdom of, of this woman. And so he decided after giving her a test to, uh, to bring her into his court and have her uh, working with him there. And uh, the, the, the test was, was interesting. He said, he said, I want you to come back to the palace. I don't want you to be neither clothed nor naked. I want you to be neither riding nor conducting uh, and, and, uh, your, your transportation here. And so she did this. She went, took her clothes off, clothed herself in a fishnet. She tied the fishnet to the end of a donkey and had the donkey drag her there to the, to, the, uh, to the palace. So she was not driving the donkey and she was not riding on the donkey, but she was being drugged on the ground behind him. There were one or two other tests like that. And when she got to the castle, the, the king was so impressed with her intelligent way that she had met his challenge that, that he asked her to be his wife and she married him. They had a good life together. They, uh, they were ones who uh, were benevolent to, to other uh, people. And the, uh, and the king was, was so uh, thrilled with her because of her intelligence, he was helpful. She was helpful many times in, in his court. But she got into trouble because when there was trouble between the king and, a, and one of his uh, members uh, of his uh, court, then, then she would give words of wisdom to, the, to, the, to both sides, and he didn't like that. And particularly when, when it caused him to be embarrassed for, for not being uh, as intelligent as he should be or as insightful as, as he should be. So he 
constantly was remonstrating with her about about how she um, how she was not uh, uh, helpful to him in his in his court. So finally, one day it just grew to be a big blow up, and he he told her he wanted to leave the the castle. She she had. 24 hours to get out of the castle, and he stormed out of her room. So she got ready to, to leave, and he calmed down and came back into her room and said, I'm going to make one concession. You may take the most precious thing, the thing that you think is the most costly, the thing that would help you to go ahead and live. Uh, you may take that with you out of, out, of, out of the castle. And then he stormed out and slammed the door. That evening, she invited him to come to her to her chambers and to have a final glass of wine before she left the, uh, the, the, the palace and they, and, and they did have the wine together. She, he didn't know she had laced it with sleeping powder. And so she uh, carried on with the, uh, with, with, with the conversation and she had the, uh, the, the, the sleeping powder took a, effect very quickly and so she had her servant wrap the king up in in a in a linen rug and take him to her father's house and the next morning when the king woke up he realized where where he was because he had been there many times before and he said how dare you kidnap the king he said you have abducted the king himself and she said no i just did what you offered he said what do you mean you said for me to take the thing that was the most precious to me, and that's what I've done. The king was touched by that and forgave her and brought her back into his court assembly. To me, that's what God has done for us. In Jesus Christ, he comes and, and gives us the most precious thing that he can give, and that's his son who died on the cross for you and me. And then God gives us the challenge to do the same thing. For us to choose the most precious thing in our life and to follow that, that one. He offers us Jesus Christ as the one that's the most precious. Well, we can't be like Christ and go and offer uh, ourselves in crucifixion, all of us. But what we can do, and this is, a, I think, is what the Bible teaches, is that we can give a portion of our worldly goods to God, back to him, acknowledging that everything we have comes from God and is a gift from God. This idea of giving 10% starts out in the book of Genesis, which a lot of people don't realize, and carries all the way through the Bible to give a tithe of our income to God. It's a thank offering to him and it's an acknowledgement that we can't really give our uh, our lives in, in, in crucifixion, but we can give a portion of our worldly goods as an expression that God is the most precious thing to us in the world. And our salvation through Jesus Christ is the most precious thing that we, that we have in, in the world. I like the way that uh, Paul expresses it in his uh, second letter to the Corinthians in the ninth chapter and the, and the uh, the ninth verse when he says, uh, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. The word cheerful, I've always thought, was a little meager translation. Uh, the, the, the real word uh, in, in Greek means uproariously funny. You think it's just a hoot that, 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 you, could, that you could give to, to, to God anything. And that's what God wants, someone who gives with that spirit of joy and of, and of enthusiasm and, and, and of gratitude to, to him. And that is the way that we can show that we have given our whole selves to God and accept him as the gift and, and his gift of salvation. God bless you as you continue to work through the idea in your life as how you can best serve God and show that he is the most important thing in your life. Amen.